My name is Wellington Lima. I was born in, Brazil, in Recife, Brazil. I am 31 years old and right now I live in America for about 13 years. I started my career back in Recife, Brazil when I was about 11 to 12 years old um, doing capoeira, a Brazilian martial art that I, you know, that I loved because there was a lot of creativity, you know, when people were jumping they were using their bodies in, in, in an amazing way and I just wanted to jump like them. I did that for about uh, six months, uh, the capoeira when I began on the streets of Brazil. Then I, I say you know, to myself, um, I want to be, uh, you know, I want to be, get better at that. So that's when I, I started gymnastics. I did gymnastics for about six years. And uh, after six years of practicing in the, in the team over there, back in the northwest of Brazil, I did start doing trampoline. The trampoline was the part that really, I really identify myself with because it has to do with the air. The idea of staying in the air, you know, flying and get, your, get the height as high as you can and then whenever, whenever you are there in the air, just you have a moment that it like, it frees your body and you, there's like a silent moment over there. And that's an important moment where you can actually execute all the important elements when it's the top, you know, we're in top in the air. And I got fascinated by that and, you know, I started doing that and in 1997, I won the Brazilian championship of trampoline in the national team over there. And um, I moved from Recife, my hometown in the northwest of Brazil, to train in Rio de Janeiro in, at the end of 1997. After uh, I won the nationals in 1997, um, by August of 1997, in December, November, December of uh, that year, I moved to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to train with the national team. And the week that I arrived there at, the, at Rio, there was a, an audition for Cirque du Soleil that was happening in the National Cirque School. And I went there to see my friends uh, being part of the event. I think it was really interesting. I didn't really have an idea what was Cirque du Soleil. I heard the name of it, but not really the, you know, how big it was. So, you know, as I went there to see the audition, people asked me to be part of it. And I was not, you know, not really nervous because I didn't see myself in being part of the circle, you know, being part of this team of creativity. And uh, as soon as I did the audition, there was like, they invite me to be part of it, you know. The audition was um, among 120 people that did part of the audition. I, they select only four. So during those four, they call me and then I say no in the beginning, you know, because I didn't, I didn't see myself being part of the circus, you know, idea of the circus, I didn't even imagine that. My general idea was to represent Brazil in a, in a competition, an international competition. Three or four months later, they call me again. And they say, look, this is a unique opportunity and you come here to see us and you see how you feel. So. I signed a little contract of training and in 1998 I, I talked to the president of the Confederation of Brazil and he told me, listen, go there, you know, try for a little bit and if it doesn't work, you know, you're always going to have a place here. I went there, I remember there was in uh, May of uh, 1998 and the, the flight, the plan was to come back to Brazil in July, you know, so it was about two or three months. but. I end up staying there, and uh, here I am, 13 years later, living in America after travel all over the world, living my dream, helping people, people helping me, and you know, being blessed. In 1998, when I came to to Cirque, uh, my first uh, place was in Canada. I stayed there for about four, five months. It was a great place. Then we did, uh, I did the, crea the creation of La Nuba, one of the shows here in Orlando, Florida. And I came here, we did the show um, at Downtown Disney. And in, in 2000, I, I did the show until 2004. 
then they called me to do the, another creation called Dralion. It was very interesting with Dralion because while I was in Dralion, I went back to Canada, which is a great place of creativity. Then uh, there, there was a tour that toured Europe, Japan and Australia. Uh, in Europe I went to I Spain, I went to Germany, I went to Switzerland, I went to Holland. It, it was great, you know, it was great. And uh, oh, the, the, the tour that I did in Australia was fantastic. In Japan, uh, so many cultural things that, you know, I get to experiment, to experience that, you know, if I would have to pay, it would be very expensive. So I was living a dream and I was getting paid for it. So at this moment, I'm working uh, in Las Vegas, uh, doing a show in tri tribute to Elvis. The show is called Viva Elvis. Uh, I've been working there for about a year already and it's a very energetic show. It's a little bit different compared to the other shows that I've been with Cirque because it involves a lot of um, music, of course, from Elvis, you know, and the, the, the aspects of... Uh, over there is a little bit more natural, um, the makeup, you know, I did not have the transformation, the magic that I was, you know, doing in, um, with the other shows. But the good thing about that is that I play, I play, a, very, I play a very interesting part in the, in the show on one of the parts is I play a superhero. Everyone has this idea of, you know, grow up and be a superhero one time in their life. And I remember trying to be a one when I was a kid. And over there in the show, I, I have this opportunity. Elvis was inspired by a superhero, by comic books. You know, if you, remember, if you guys remember, remember when he has a cape, that was an idea. And the way he pose, you know, all this karate and things like that was inspired by superheroes. So, I play a very special part for that, you know, and, and one, that's one of the main reasons I really like the show, you know. It's difficult to, to, to say how I define creativity. I just believe that creative has to come from inside. Uh, you know, it's, there is a little fire inside of all of us, no matter what we do in life, you know, there's things that inspire us. And if I would say, how do I, how do I get in my inspiration to get you know crea cre creative is to be spontaneous. One thing transforms to another, so that's creativity is to be able to be open for different ideas to come into your life and be flexible to transform that. The advice that I would give for people that want to be creative is really to believe in themselves. It's uh, you know it's. Some people, for some people, they, it's like following their dreams, you know. It, it may be crazy for some people, but for others, uh, the person that especially uh, experiences, you know, the sense of creativity, they have to believe in that and follow the, the you know, follow the, the, the fire that I was mentioning before, you know, and, and, and really go for it. There was, it's always, there will, there will be always people that are going to be against you, no matter what you do in life, you know, and you have to fight that and go for what you believe is right for you. That's what I, I did in my life, you know, I, being, I, I, there was a lot of people that didn't believe in that I could be here today and here I am, you know. They are proud of me and I'm, I'm proud of them too for actually giving me that challenge to, you know, believe in myself and, you know, like, I, I'm so grateful that there was, you know, there was time in my life that people say, you know what, well, you know, it's going to be very difficult and it, it's very, very few people can make it. And I say, you know what, I want to be part of that few people. Where I grew up in Brazil, there was many challenge, you know, um, and it was really interesting that I, that every time I go there and I see my friends and like they are so happy for me because you know I went out of that challenge area. But I used to think when I was a kid that you know I didn't belong where I live. I had this dream of always doing something better and great somewhere, not where I, I came from. And you know I say challenge instead of 
difficulty because you know in life there is always probation you know you can choose you know about choice you know it, it all comes in, in a matter of choice you have to follow what's inside of you and what's push you and I, that's what I did I really saw myself not in the area not being part of the difficulty well people were maybe I had friends that were doing drugs and I was close to them but I told them I told myself that's not who I am that's not who I am and some sometime instead of being there I was doing some exercise I wanted I was doing something to help me to you know to be prepared for whenever there will there will be an opportunity to be ready for it that's that's exactly what happened you know there was an opportunity for me to to come here to America to to join Cirque but because I was ready for it, I was always training. People would go home, I would stay over, train extra. It was paid for, but with a lot of sweat. And I'm glad I'm here to cut the story because, you know, I could... If someone asked me, what would what would be doing now if you were in Brazil, you know, I, I like the idea of teaching. So, you know, I'd probably be a teacher now of, of ED, you know, and physical education. But I don't know. I, being an artist, w what I am today, I can give so much to the world. You know, I would be touching few people as a coach, but as an artist, I touch millions. I believe if you, ha you have to do a little bit more. If you only do until here, you're only gonna achieve until here. You have to go beyond that. You have to go on that line because again another opportunity can, can, can arrive and if you're not ready the, the, the training will pass by and not gonna catch you because you only train limit you know they cannot do only I, I you know, like I am an artist but I try to get involved in other activities like I you know I'm in, totally involved with capoeira capoeira is really part of my life it's, it's one of the way I breathe or I move for, for sure but you know, I'm, I go to school. I, I get involved with uh, youth at risk. You know, this is one of the big things for me. It's one way for me to not never forget where I come from. And you know, and helping people that it's that need a little bit of guidance. Every time I go back to my place in Brazil, Recife, I visit the gym where I first start to train gymnastics, and I go there. And I t talk to my coach, and I have opportunity to help people every time I go there. Because if I made it, other people can make it. I believe in whatever you do in life, you have to work towards something that you're gonna touch people with creativity, with acrobatics, or whatever you do. It's to touch people. I one of the places that I feel great about it is is, is the stage. Because you know, it's a, it's a, there is a spotlight for that for you to you know to have your little moment to touch the people. But one thing that is special about myself, if I could say, is that I stay, I take that stage everywhere in my life. I'm a performer, even here. If I have an opportunity, I'll do something funny face or something that will make people like, wow, this guy is. It's funny. Actually, my nickname, I have a nickname. My nickname is Palasada, meaning clowning, clowning around. I like to, to play around and, you know, make people laugh a little bit. I think it's so important to have a little smile for, for life. You know, a smile for life is, is one of my things. There is a, this peak of ecstasy that you do with what, with what you have passion for that everybody should experience. If not every day, once a week, once a month, but having that, because that's the fire for you to live life happily. Wellington Lima.